Hi there, this video is sort of part 2 of my review of the RS14 multimeter from RS Components. If you have not seen it, you might want to click on the link and watch it first. Initially I planned to just add a bit more information that I discovered since the last video and finish the RS14 story with a calibration of DC and AC modes. But during filming I discovered some issues when doing temperature measuring with the RS14 which will need a part 3 to explain. If you recall from the first video, I couldn't read any marking on the chip driving this multimeter. In my search for more information on all things RS14, I found Mark Hennessy's webpage which I highly recommend, I put a link in the description of this video. Not only has he got a whole list of very detailed budget multimeter reviews, but as you can see there's a lot of other information from hi-fi to peak programming. Here are his multimeter reviews to date. And there is his review of the RS14, which when he bought it was in a blue enclosure rather than the red one it is now, but otherwise the meters are the same and his review comes to very similar conclusions. In the intro Mark mentions that the RS14 is a rebranded CEM DT914. And sure enough the DT914 really looks like a blue twin of the red RS14. But more interesting is this remark regarding the link to the chip used in the DT914 B-side and the RS14 meters, a Fortune Semiconductor FS9952, exactly the information I was looking for. And on their site there is a 34 page datasheet available for download, we struck gold. I guess none of us are really interested in the pinouts but I do want to show some of the other content. Here we have the technical specification. The minimum supply voltage is 2.4 volts which is in line with what I found in the first video. More importantly this chip is really meant for 3 volts battery power rather than the 9 volts with a voltage regulator as in the RS14. There isn't a separate pin to measure battery voltage, instead the chip uses VTD. This also explains the strange behavior of the low BAT indicator which we saw. Further we learn that the annoying beep is 2.7 kHz, but probably more useful is the AC bandwidth of 20 to 1 kHz and that the resistance limit for the continuity beep could be anything between 10 and 60 ohm which is a rather wide range. I already showed that continuity isn't one of the strong points of this meter. It kind of works, but it's very slow to respond and not latching. But now I wanted to find out what the max resistance is that my RS14 still recognizes as continuity. I happen to have this variable resistor of 65 ohms and as expected, the RS14 does not beep when measuring the full range. But watch, or rather listen, what happens if I change the resistance from 0 ohms upwards. I have never had a continuity test where the volume changes with resistance. In my other meters, it either beeps or it doesn't. Taken together with a slow fading low BAT indicator, the RS14 is refreshingly analog for a digital meter. Back to the datasheet. Here's a function I was really looking for. You can disable the sometimes annoying auto power off or APO function after all. Pressing hold while powering on turns it off. I think I tried this for my first video, but because the display does not show whether it's enabled or not, I thought it did not do anything. For comparison, here is the normal behavior. I did start the timer about 10 seconds late, so at 13 minutes and 50 seconds we get a warning, and at 14 minutes and 50 seconds it turns off. Pressing the hold during power on 
turns APO off, but there is no indication and of course the display is now in hold mode. So you need to press hold again to do measurements. Since APO is now off, there are no warning beeps and the meter keeps going past the 15 minutes mark. To test if APO remains disabled even if you switch mode, I selected DC mode. And sure enough, it keeps going, now running continuously for more than 30 minutes. The only time APO is re-enabled is when you turn the meter off, but that means if you move the selector from volts or resistance to current, APO is re-enabled because you go via the off position. And of course the same happens when you move the selector the other way. The datasheet is a bit confusing regarding the behavior of the hold and max function with respect to APO. It appears that pressing either one to wake up the meter after an automatic power off will disable APO, but while the language for APO and hold is clear enough, I do struggle to make sense of max. Here is the meter going to sleep as normal with the default APO enabled. Pressing max does wake it up. But it did not turn the APO function off, so after 15 minutes the meter goes back to sleep. Pressing hold instead after APO and the meter wakes up and it stays awake so using hold for waking the meter does disable the APO at the same time. By the way, the ease how the meter wakes up after APO by the slightest touch of these buttons means it's not a good idea to rely on APO and throw it in your toolbox without turning it off properly. Moving on, and we have a complete schematic of a meter which resembles the RS14 implementation in principle, but there are a few differences and tweaks. First you notice that this is for 3V supply and secondly the RS14 skips all that HFE transistor measuring stuff here. I don't want to spend too much time on all the options, but it's well worth downloading this datasheet and going through it in your own time because you normally don't see multimeter circuit diagrams that often and this one has the advantage of being reasonably simple and the datasheet goes to some length detailing the different functional areas and options. Here we have the option suggested for using 4.5 to 9 volts as power supply, which is probably what we have in the RS14 with a separate voltage regulator. The AC options are interesting. We have the standard AC averaging circuit as used in the RS14 and note that Trimpot VR1 is used for calibrating the AC mode. I want to point out the 28.5 and 22 kilo ohm resistors and the diodes here because we can find them in the RS14. Note that you could implement a peak value measurement instead or with the help of a separate AD737 chip even true RMS. For comparison that chip sells around for 9 pounds on the RS components side which is about half the cost of the RS14. If you compare the datasheet AC circuit diagram with the PCB of the RS14 it is clear that the datasheet's VR1 for AC calibration is actually labeled VR2 on the RS14. You can see the 28 and 22K resistors as well as the diodes very close to it. In the DC section the datasheet shows the range divider and also explains VR2 in line with this 20K resistor is used for DC calibration by adjusting the 100mV reference. And as expected the datasheet's VR2 is actually VR1 on the RS14. You can see the 20k resistor right next to it. I wonder why these two designations were swapped, but at least it's possible to identify what is what. There is lots more information, but I skip over it to complete the quest for finding calibration settings. Here we find VR3 and VR4 are used for calibrating the temperature measurement. However, in the RS14, things in this area are clearly quite a bit different from the example circuit in the datasheet, as there is this dual op amp 
and if you follow the PCB traces, VR3 and VR4 seem to be connected to it. It turns out there are some issues with the RS14 here and I have to defer looking at VR3 and VR4 for part 3. With the help of the datasheet and cross-checking with the PCB, we now know which VR adjusts AC and DC calibration values, come up with our own procedure and then do a calibration. But it turns out we can even follow the original procedure. Right after I got the RS14, I had asked RS Components customer support for two pieces of information. The calibration procedure and what body certified the CAT3 600V EN61010-1 compliance. It took more than two months and the pandemic did not help, but they did get me that information right from their Chinese supplier. That shows the value of buying kit from a proper distributor, especially if it has their name on it. To start with the second question, its CAT rating, obviously based on its twin DT914 model, was established by the Shenzhen Academy of Metrology and Quality Inspection, or in short, SMQ. And you can check out, as I obviously did, that SMQ is properly certified to do this kind of qualification testing. Yes, it's not UL listing, but for a budget meter, this is a lot better than I expected. On to the other question, calibration. You see here what I received. It's an Excel spreadsheet with two tabs, DC volt and temperature. Don't you just love it? If spreadsheets are used for all kinds of stuff they were never designed to do, in this instance, we have a spreadsheet with text, logo, pictures and annotation drawings, but nothing what you would normally find in a spreadsheet, like numbers or formulas. Oh well, better than nothing, I guess. As expected, it's for the DT914 and in the DCV tab, it confirms the swap designation of VR1 and VR2. The calibration procedure, called debugging indicators for some reason, is simple enough. Put the meter into the 100 mV range, apply 100 mV and adjust VR1 until it reads 99.9, 100 or 100.1. For AC, the procedure is similar, but to be performed with 1 V AC 50 or 60 Hz and adjusted with VR2. No word on the shape of the waveform, but being an averaging meter, it has to be sine wave, of course. Sadly, it does not specify the type of equipment or calibrators used, and the only other information is that a static wristband must be worn and the calibrator must be grounded. Interesting that if the operator finds five consecutive defects of the same type, they need to report it. I guess that would mean a flaw in the assembly process. Well, I don't have a 100 mV reference, so I rigged a setup using the Bryman 869 for comparison. That meter is accurate to 0.02% in the mV range, which is more than good enough for this job. The 100 mV come from a 1.5 V battery cell to avoid any ripple or noise through a multi-turn trim pot as a divider to give sufficient granularity for adjustment. For AC it is in principle the same setup, except I'm using a 50Hz sine wave from a function generator as input to the trim pot. After the calibration, the RS14 is now almost spot on when reading the 5V reference voltage from the DMM Check Plus. Given the tolerances in the resistor divider in the RS14, this is probably as good as you can get. Testing the calibrated AC against the DMM Check Plus 100Hz rectangular wave of 4.9989V, the prime is 15 mV low, which is 0.3%, well within its spec for AC. The 5.54 shown on the RS14 are the result of it being an averaging meter and not true RMS. I made several videos about this, 
For now the conversion for rectangular waveforms is to divide the value by 1.11 and that results in 4.9909 volts which is nearly spot on. The temperature calibration now called commissioning instructions are quite complex but the more I look at it the less I like it and I started to do some temperature measurements and couldn't believe how bad the RS14 is doing in that. But to do it justice I decided not to rush it and to do a proper investigation which means this video ends sort of on a cliffhanger. For now if temperature measurements are your thing I would hold off getting an RS14 until you have seen part 3. In the meantime, and as always, stay safe and thanks for watching.